beautiful people and welcome back to my channel. Today I just wanted to talk about my updates in my identity and my sexuality and just like where I'm at, I guess. So I would say for about a year now I've identified as bisexual. I haven't like come out on the internet per se because that just has always seemed scary to me. And it's just something that I've kind of always like felt inside and then I started to like kind of externalize it but in the past month or so I've started to feel like bisexual isn't necessarily even the term that fits me because I've been I've just been unpacking a lot of like compat we are all in the chokehold of compat we are all we are all under the influence of compat and it's very very difficult to unravel and unpack because it's just so normal. It's just so normal. And once I started to really think about like how I behave in relationships with men and what has kind of incentivized me to stay in relationships with men. And I just started to think about like how dating men has just kind of been a habit. You know what I mean? It wasn't really super intentional and I, I was starting to think about it. I was like, I've never like initiated a relationship. You know, I've always like just gone with the flow. If somebody asked me like, even if I'm not even sure that I want to be in a relationship with that person, I'm like, okay, well, you know, let's see where it goes. Cause you feel that you're supposed to be in relationships with men kind of thing. But once you start to, cause after my last relationship, I started to not feel as much pressure that I needed to be married and have kids and, you know, just like be a wife. Like I always felt that there was so much kind of respect and status that comes with being a wife. And that's why I think in my head, it was always a box I needed to check off. But then after my relationship ended, and I think also once I started really getting into my platform, I started to not give a shit about that anymore. I started to not care about getting married, not care about being a wife, not need to have children come out of my body that, you know, are biological children that I had with a man. Like I do want to raise kids at some point in some capacity, but I don't need them to come out of my body and I don't need them to be like, the stereotypical like regular traditional way of having a family if that makes sense and i started to just think about like i've been watching a lot of game of thrones recently i've been reading it i've been re-watching it i'm obsessed with game of thrones and you know Jon snow for example there's a lot of things that he's limited to because he's a bastard you know what i'm saying and that's something that like that's the legacy of marriage and i just started to think about like what is marriage really doing what does marriage really perpetuate what is the legacy of marriage what is the legacy of like man takes wife, all that shit. I don't really fuck with it when I look deep down, right? Because also I'm a bastard. I'm a bastard. Um, I don't think I'm worth any less. I don't think I, my life is less worthy because I don't have the legacy of my father's last name. You know what I'm saying? And so once you start there, you can kind of start to unpack your behaviors that go along with this ideology, right? And yada, yada, yada led me to coming into my queerness more than ever before. And now I identify as queer. That is the label I'm using right now because getting into the specificities, first of all, I think for me, it's a little bit just stressful and overwhelming. Like I know that I'm attracted to many different types of beings. You could call that pansexual. You could call that bisexual. Do you know what I'm saying? But I also am aware that my past attraction was very heavily influenced by societal norms and mind conditioning and things that I didn't really intend. Do you know what I'm saying? So part of it for me is that I don't even trust myself to fully know myself yet. So I like queer as a, as a title because it, it leaves room. For me, it feels like it leaves room for the exploration because once for me like once I started to be searching for more specific labels like it feels like you're almost cutting off the opportunity for exploration for me for me you may be super sure 
of who you are and what you want, you know what I mean? I have, I have a good, I have a decent idea, right? But I think the main thing for, for me was that I knew I was really interested in dating women and I felt that my habit of dating men was a habit. Do you know what I'm saying? I was like, the people that I felt like I was having conversations with or connecting with were not necessarily always like intentional, this is what I want and this is what feels good to me. And you know, after reading the lesbian master doc, one of the main points from that, and I, I do wanna make a whole video on the lesbian master doc, I think it deserves its own video. But one of the main points that I took from that is attraction is supposed to feel good. Attraction is supposed to feel good. When I really started thinking about my attraction to men, a lot of it did not make me feel good. That doesn't mean I'm not attracted to them. There are different facets of attraction, whether you're talking like physical, mental, emotional, whatever. And I don't even fully understand, like honestly, I am not at the point where I understand like the way it works and the difference between, you know how you can kind of be like romantically attracted to someone versus physically and blah, blah, blah. I haven't been able to sort out in my own brain what the layers of that are for me, right? I just know what my past is and where I am now. Where I am now, I really do want to focus more on dating women. That being said, I also don't want to kind of, I don't want to ignore any part of myself. And I think that coming into my queerness has been realizing that and realizing that freedom is kind of one of the most important things for me and freedom of choice and freedom to explore because I think that's how I become my most authentic self. And like, also just in social situations, I found queer spaces to be a lot more freeing, a lot more authentic, a lot more real conversations happening, a lot less of me feeling like the people around me are scrutinizing me for my behavior. Like in, in so many like hetero rooms, I just always feel odd. And I've always felt that way. I've always felt like there is a, a game at play that I don't know the rules. Do you know what I'm saying? Or like there's a, there's like, it feels scripted. Like a lot of times hetero situations, it feels so scripted and people look at me and they're like, what are you doing? Because I'm like going off script. Does that make sense? And that is like why queerness is so freeing. And I love it. I'm, I'm obsessed with it. I'm addicted to it. And it's changing me so much already. Like even just, it can be little things, right? Like even I just, I stopped shaving. You know, and I like I've done this once before, but then I shaved it off because I was like, no, I, I don't feel like people will sort of accept me like this. And that I, I need to go into a whole, whole, whole individual video on how I realized my upbringing as a person of color around predominantly white people, specifically white women, and then making sure that I felt ugly and felt lesser and went out of their way to prove it and went out of the way to prove that boys didn't find me attractive either. Like that had a lot to do with covering up my true sexual and gender identity. Because once I started to feel like people were masculinizing me, which is what happens when you are a black girl around white women, um, now the idea of like presenting in any more of a masculine way, well, not now now, but very, very previous to now, and st I'm still working on it now, the idea of that terrifies me. Do you know what I'm saying? And so my whole life I've strayed away from like, you know, armpit hair, getting lots of tattoos, cutting my hair short because I felt I was already being made to feel masculine. I didn't need any help. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And in that aspect, something that coming into queerness has helped me realize is that I may really truly have more masculine energy in me than I've been willing to look at because I felt that if I were to identify as any more masculine than like hyper feminine or, or feminine, I would feel like it wasn't a choice because I've always felt that people have made to make me feel masculine, specifically white women slash maybe white people. I don't know. That's an, another thing that I haven't really figured out the nuances of yet, but that's kind of where I'm at right now. Um, I just wanted to share that. There will be a lot of videos about my journey, about queerness, all this stuff, about my gender identity and how I'm exploring that right now. All those kinds of things coming soon. So make sure to like and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Kira Bria and Twitter at Kira Bria. 
Link to my Patreon is down below. My podcast will be linked down below as well. And yeah, thanks so much for watching and I will talk to you next time. Bye.